Hi, my name is Vineet and I'm going to show you how to build a PID control system with a data acquisition device in LabVIEW. Let's begin by looking at the hardware that we have. Here I've got a USB 6216 bus powered multifunction data acquisition device and I've got the outputs and inputs actually connected to this plant here. In this control system I'm actually using a fan to actuate the movement of this deflector. I can change the speed of the fan by varying the power going to it using one of the analog input channels of my data acquisition device. And I can measure the location of the deflector using a Hall effect sensor that's located at the bottom down here. The bottom of this deflector has a magnet and you can see as it attaches to my screwdriver I can vary the magnetic field in relation to the position of the Hall effect sensor and then that sensor will output some voltage proportional to what it's measuring. I can measure that voltage and based on that I can build a simple control system. In fact, if I hit run in LabVIEW here, I've already developed an initial VI, a virtual instrument, and you can see at this point I'm just taking an, a measurement of that sensor. So as I move this deflector up and down, I can monitor the sensor readings and display them on a graph. So now to create a control system, what I need to do is first create some output functionality. So I'm going to resize this loop. I'm going to move this stop button down to the corner here and when I right click I'm going to use the data acquisition assistant. It's actually the same assistant I use for input but in this case I'm going to choose to generate signals instead of acquire signals. I'm going to choose analog output, voltage and choose analog output zero which is what my fan is connected to and when I hit finish I have the option now to configure that channel. I'm going to choose a maximum output voltage of 5 volts and a minimum of 0 volts and instead of generating a certain number of samples, I'm actually going to generate one sample on demand. So this is important for single point control applications where I just want to send one point at a time and update that based on software. Once I hit OK, the data acquisition assistant configures my device and now I want to have some control in order to send that output value. So I'm going to drop down a slide controller on the front panel. I can resize the front panel here to move things around. And I'm going to set the minimum and maximum values from 0 to 5 volts. I can then on my block diagram wire the output of that slide over to the data input terminal for my output. And now when I hit run, I can update values of that output channel and move the fan. So I'm going to slowly slide the output up. And you can see as the fan is moving the deflector, I can slow it down again. It'll actually measure the distance of that Hall effect sensor. So this is an example of manual control where I can manually change the output values and the input values and, um, and affect the location of that deflector. But of course I want to be able to automate this and in order to do that I can use a PID control algorithm. I can right click and, and take advantage of a LabVIEW toolkit called the PID control toolkit. And if I drop down this PID VI and bring up the help window you can take a look at all the inputs and outputs that are available. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative Control and it's a very common type of control algorithm that's used today. I can send the process variable input and set that coming from the actual measured sensor value and I can send the output of this going to my analog output. So I can use the PID control function to control what I'm sending out. I'm going to now use this slide control instead of sending it directly to the analog output channel I'm going to send it to the set point value and that's where I can tell the control loop where I'd like to be. I can set my desired value. And now let's create some controls for the settings of the actual PID controller. I can create a control for the PID gains and I can create a control for the output range. And now on the front panel I can configure these settings in LabVIEW. Now tuning a PID controller has an entire science behind it. You can mathematically determine what these values are based on a mathematical model of the plant itself. Um, but more often than not, what I see is people basically using trial and error and experimentally determining what the optimal values are. And that's actually what I did in this case. So I've already seen a good response come from setting the proportional value to 0 0.6, the integral value to 0 0.05, and the derivative value to 0 0.04. For the output range, again, we're going to set that high output range to 5 and the, and the low output range to 0. And lastly, I want to be able to view my set point 
and the measured value on the same graph. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a merge signals function so I can add both the measured value signal as well as the set point and then send that output or over to the graph. If I move the wires around here so it's a little easier to see, I can click on this waveform graph and in fact add a second plot. So my the red line on the chart is going to be the set point value and the white line is going to be the measured value. Now when I hit run I can see my measured value and my set point value actually if I right now my set point value is set to zero which is off the scale of the actual chart but you can see as I ramp this up I'm going to set this at about 2.3 and you can see the red value is the set point that I'm setting and the control system has effectively moved over to that value. I've varied the fan speed in order to get there. If I move the value down a little bit, over time the control loop will accumulate that error and get closer and closer to that desired set point. So we've effectively created a PID control system with a simple USB data acquisition device in LabVIEW. If I wanted a higher performance control system, I could use a more deterministic bus like PCI Express or PXI, and even a more deterministic operating system like LabVIEW Realtime. And all that is available to me with the same programming capabilities that we just shown here.